my current role is like devops engineer and uh, and so i have like very good experience in this aws and devops these days like people are moving towards the microservices so i am currently working on kubernetes a lot right before that i have worked on aws and the lambda functions a lot like so a very random things on which i have worked so far i you know like uh, i think almost uh, 20 plus services i have been using on aws on regularly basis and uh, if we talk about devops in devops like i have used almost every tool so jenkins ansible terraform ansible tower and uh, of course like you know one of the prerequisite which is always required is git so a very good knowledge on on git then packer and then the shell scripting the python scripting and uh, Kubernetes, Docker, and uh, so many C and CD, like include, including Travis, right? So there are like a bunch of tools, even like sometimes I don't remember the name of the tools, including Selenium and all. So working, you know, have a great knowledge about all these things. And I have seen that, you know, uh, working as a DevOps engineer really required the knowledge of AWS cloud computing. So AWS cloud computing is, uh, is, a, is a cloud platform which is being used by most of the organizations, right, these days. However, like these days, people are shifting to this Azure, but not completely. Some of the workload uh, have been moved to the Azure in some companies, including us, right? So we are also planning to move on, you know, some of the workload on, on Azure. So that is also a great platform, but not as, as good as like AWS. But like, you know, uh, people don't want to create dependencies in the organization. So uh, that's why like Azure also. And uh, so this is about me, uh, you know, and uh, like with you guys, my colleague Iftikhar uh, will be connecting with you, right? So he also has like five years of experience. Iftikhar, would you like to explain about you and then we will probably start the session. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, hi everyone. Can you hear me now? They are on mute, so you can speak. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, everyone. Good morning. My name is Iftikhar Ahmed. Okay. So I have. Seven years of experience and uh, last five years uh, I'm working as a DevOps engineer. So they have and tools uh, so instead of together uh, with the different organization. So I'm also using the same that Terraform for the nowadays that many of the organization are going uh, forward to automate their uh, uh, thing to AWS or the DevOps that moving all the things. Okay, so we are using the different type of tools like scripting Python and uh, Terraform Packer to out, automate their uh, services. So together we will take uh, the sessions. Okay, so this is brief about me. Okay, so now it's Abdikhar, your voice is breaking. Is is we are audible to you? You can start the session. Okay, fine. Thank you. So now the, so, start the session. So this is all about me. Okay, thank you, Prikar. So like your voice was a bit breaking for me. I don't like whether the other people have heard you properly, but yes. Guys, we can start now, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, you can. Okay. Fine. So you know, let me start with a very interesting fact about which you haven't come came across. So we are going to start with this, uh, you know, uh, auto scaling group. Even like this is a kind of demo, uh, you know. Uh, so you may find that you know you are not aware about it, and you may find uh, 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 like you may find some kind of problem if you are hearing this thing for the first time, right? So let me explain a bit about this. Let's say that you are working, you know, you are working in an organization where like uh, there are like different bunch of applications are running 
and uh, some applications are there which is not required during the night time right and uh, the primary thing uh, like the application is not required to run on the night time is that you know uh, is to save cost so most of the companies even like this at this point of time if we think so the pandemic is going on right so the corona is going on so because of this corona many companies came to a certain point where they have to go and save a lot of costs for them because you know applications cannot be destroyed in the organization but yes they can be stopped if they are not using uh, you know the customer they are like less customers or less user who are accessing the application so in that case in that case we what we can do best is that we have to go and stop the instance during the night time and we can save some cost so if we stop the instance for 12 hours in a day so that means the cost is going to reduce by half uh, for for the current month right so now the application is running on the ec2 instance and or we can simply go and stop the ec2 instance and the application will stop right but the problem arises you know uh, when you have configured the auto scaling growth to launch your instances where your application is running that means as soon as you will stop the instance what will happen that the new instance will come up and uh, you know your application will start running again mm -hmm. so that means you will not be able to stop the instances which are part of auto scaling group right so what can be done in that case so let me let me show you this demo i hope that you guys got the understanding about it and uh, you know so let's go and click on the services and here we have to go and click on this ec2 right so ec2 is the service uh, where you can go and launch the instance that means a virtual server and then you can run your applications right so i will go and launch an instance for me and uh, and basically like most of the time people go and click on this instances section and you will see the whole list of instance in your account in mumbai region so right now i am using this mumbai region and click on this launch instance right and i'm going to use uh, red heart and uh, probably red heart 7 or send 7 anywhere of them or it is okay so Red Hat 7 and the like, you know, uh, microservices T2, sorry, T2.micro, uh, so that I can save some costs and uh, configure instance. And then you have to go and choose whole networking and stuff. We will be explaining about these things later on that, you know, what do we mean by this networking and all and how it is important in the organization and, and the other factors like IAM role, which is very, very important. Now uh, let's go and you know fill something in the user data because I'm not really interested to uh, you know configure this thing from the inside. So when this instance will be launching for the first time, so this script is going to execute and uh, you know some of the packages will install. So which packages? Let me install the yum install and then you know uh, cpd. Okay and uh, because i'm installing it from the script and i will not be having option to say yes and no so i have to go and define hyphen y right so that it is installed automatically now whenever the instance launches for the first time so it says uh, that you know uh, it basically it has a user which is sudo user right so you will not be you know this script will not be executing from a root user it it will be uh, from a sudo user so you have to go and define sudo otherwise this script will not execute at all you know this command will not execute now we also need to start the service system ctl is a command which we use in linux operating system and uh, start http stdpd and uh, sudo system ctl and then enable stdpd and i'm also going to echo you know uh, some of this stuff so this is our demo and uh, 
I'm going to redirect this output to a file to a file that is like slash var slash www slash html slash index.html file. So index.html is a file which is basically used by the you know Apache service by default. So we are saying that this is our demo. That's it. Okay. Now go and click on this add storage. So the amount of the storage will be 10 GB and I can go and reduce it. I can get, go and increase it depending upon depending upon our use case. I go and click on this add tag and uh, we can say that name and we can say like demo right now go and click on this configure security group so you know this is one of the important factor in organization because like whenever we do you know we configure the instance so you know most of the organizations ask it to be get secure the reason is very simple that you know most of the organizations have to uh, follow some compliances standard like PCI DSS or, or you know uh, like SOC. So these are the compliances which has to be fulfilled by some of the organizations, especially the financial organizations, right? So this is very very important part in in most of the organizations. So you should not give any entry which is not required. So I will say the name of the security group is demo and uh, give demo. The port number 22, let it be open as of now, and I'm going to open it from my IP only and uh, click on this add rule. And uh, now you can select like HTTP because we have installed a web service from the user data. And uh, I'm going to say that, you know, this web service is going to accessible from all. Okay. Now click on this review and launch and uh, you can review the whole stuff which you have defined so far. Now you can go and click on this launch. Okay, so uh, let me go and create a new key pair, and uh, let me say the name of the key pair is demo, and uh, let's download it. So this is you know the first and last. This is the first and last time you're getting this option to download this key pair. If you you know uh, delete it. And if you just destroy this key pair, so you will not be able to log into this instance. So you need to make sure that whenever you, you know, create a key pair for your organization, so you have to go and keep this key pair very, very safe with you. Now click on this OK, and it is going to download somewhere. So let me go and, you know, download it uh, here. And uh, click on this launch instances. Okay, so it says that this snapshot size is like uh, 10 GB. So whenever this not snapshot size is 10 GB or 15 GB, so I have to go and give the you know the size of the volume. The size of the volume should be equal to size of the snapshot or greater than that. So let's go back and uh, click on this add a storage. And here you have to go and define 10 at least or more than 10 because the size of the snapshot which is right here is 10 GB, right? Now click on this again, uh, review and launch, and again launch, and uh, you have to use your key pair. Every don't create the key pair, and now click on this launch instances. So this is how you launch an instance, and uh, you know and uh, so when this instance will be available so i can go and paste this public ip address in the browser and i will be able to see a page which says this is our demo right so this is how you launch an instance now coming back to the previous uh, scenario which i said that you know you are working in an organization where you have to go and stop the instance running in the auto scaling group right and as this is a, this is the instance which is running standalone independent and you can always go and stop this instance right but if you go and stop the instance which is a part of the auto scaling group so that instance will come up you know that instance will get destroyed and new instance will be get launched for you in order to avoid that scenario uh what we can do okay let it be available first of all so till now if anybody have any questions to ask from this so they can ask me
uh, snapshot volume will be the 10 GB at every time like uh, on what basis it will be taking as a 10 GB or 8 GB uh, I didn't yeah. get that part so, so a snapshot is basically you know uh, like when you launch an instance or you have a volume with you so you try to create a snapshot that means you try to create a backup right and the volume from which you have created a backup that means a snapshot if that volume having a size of 10 gb so you know your snapshot size will be having the uh, size of 10 gb now when you create a new volume from that snapshot okay so you know you will not be able to reduce the size of the volume you know uh, because this snap because the size of the snapshot is 10 gb itself okay so these you can increase the size of the volume uh, when you are trying to create a volume from this snapshot uh, like 10 gb at least or more than 10 gb 11 12 15 up to 16 gb okay sorry up to 16 tb did you did you get the answer for your question yeah Thank okay you. Fine. So this instance is like up and running as of now, and you can see the status check is like two uh, two by two checks. And now uh, let's go and you know refresh this page once again, and uh, it is showing me the content, but not that one which we would expect it. So yeah, this is a Firefox browser right there. So you can see like, you know, I did showing us the content. This is our demo, right? So uh, this is how you configure an instance. Now, if I wanted to, so if I wanted to stop this instance, I can easily go and install this instance at any point of time and I will not be having any kind of trouble, right? So what we can do best is that, you know, and when this instance is a part of the auto scaling group, so then we will be having some trouble. And let me show you uh, what kind of trouble we will be having. So I will be like, you know, like showing this thing and configuring this thing in a speed or because, you know, this is not an in-depth class about how to scaling group and instance. So let's go and click on this create and all. And again, I will be choosing an AMI. So I'm going to grow, I'm going to create a launch configuration, uh, which is always required by the order scaling group, and we can also go and define the, you know, a launch template. So, and uh, I'm going to take like some user data which I already defined here. So, not interested in typing. So, copying this thing, and. Uh, in. Uh, ASG order scaling group. Okay, so only assign a public IP address through this instance launch in the default VPC. Okay, that's fine. Go and add a storage 10 GB again. And we are going to use existing uh, security group review and then launch configuration. And uh, keep here will be demo and this. Now you have to go and define the configuration for your order scaling group. So let's say demo ASG order scaling group, and it is going to use the launch configuration which we just created. And the number of these, uh, the the group size of the order scaling group is like one, uh, you know, instance. And uh, your instance can be available in this subnet one and subnet two. Okay. And now we can go and click on this configure scaling and uh, click on this. And we can simply go and click on this, you know, uh, review and click on this create order scaling group, right? Now, this order scaling group will be launching an instance for you depending upon your desired size. So you can see that the desired number of instance for you is one. And, uh, you know, 
and uh, if so one instance is going to launch for you so as of now you can see like zero instance is showing to you and uh, what we can do is refresh and now you can see your activities here activity history and it says that launching a new instance so if you go to this ec2 dashboard you know so you will see that one instance is getting launched for you and which don't have any name because we haven't configured it that. Okay. So, yep. So this is successful now. Launching a new instance is successful. And uh, now what I wanted to do, like I wanted to stop this instance. You can see the ID is like 265E and uh, I can go to this EC2 page and you can verify that instance ID is 265E, right? As soon as I will try to stop this instance, what will happen like, you know, this instance will get dominated and new instance will launch. And what is our motive? Our motive is to reduce the cost by stopping all the instances in your account in the night, right? So now, as I explained you that, you know, you will not be able to stop the instances available in the auto scaling growth. So what can be the solution for this? And now you will see that, you know, uh, it says that it will give a notification to us that the instance got terminated or unhealthy something. And then finally, it will be launching a new instance, right? Okay, it has been stopped, right? And So now you can see that, you know, after a couple of seconds, it is showing us like shutting down. And uh, that is, uh, you know, that usually happens whenever we have the instance in order scaling growth. Okay. So now what will happen like automatically a new instance will come up and, uh, you know, and, uh, and you will be, you know, you, you might be in an assumption that, okay, instance has been stopped, but apparently that has been, you know, destroyed, right? So, there will be a lot of trouble in the in the real production environment that the instance got terminated. Now you can see that you know uh, it has given a message to us terminating EC2 instance, and you can see uh, the timestamp and everything. And uh, finally, we got a new message that you know launching a new instance. Now you will be getting cost for this instance, right? So now the question is like you know how you can go and stop this instance whenever you don't require it, right? So that part we will be covering when we when we will be starting you know the AWS session, and there are like a couple of ways of doing it that how we can go and you know stop the instances in the auto scaling group. So and once once this instance will up and running, so you will see that the web page is still available on on your EC2 instance. So in real production environment, uh, you know what all things we have to go and configure in order to launch in order to make the applications working in the auto scaling group. So those kind of things we will be learning in our classes. Okay, so let's wait for a couple of seconds and you will see that, you know, uh, new instance will get launched and our web page will still be available. So now in this EC2 dashboard, you can see that instance is getting launched. And, uh, you know, and if I go and uh, copy this IP address, and uh, paste it somewhere in the browser so I should be able to see the page. So it takes a proc like you know it takes it takes a proc or two to three minutes depending upon the configuration of your instance. Sometime uh, in real production world like uh, you know we configure so many things during the launch time so in that case it takes around like five or 10 minutes also so if we have that kind of scenario so we also follow some kind of other processes which basically reduces our time to get access to any you know 
uh, to get access to the applications running on EC2 instances. So that also we will be learning in this class uh, that you know what kind of things can be done in order to achieve a better or efficient application running on our EC2 instances. So the web page is available. If I go and refresh this page, so you will see that you know this is our demo uh, in auto scaling group, right? So ASG. Okay, so as I said, like I will be explaining you other things also, and basically if the car will be, you know, explaining all these stuff, uh, that how these things works in AWS. The best thing of joining us is that you know we have like multiple people who have real time experience in AWS and different cloud platform and DevOps. So if you find any kind of difficulties with one trainer, then you know you wanted to. Uh, and know that topic from the other trainer also. So we have that kind of flexibility, right? And uh, the other thing is like, apart from this thing, we will be having a weekly, you know, a kind of assignment session on uh, which you guys have to go and join and perform the activities during the assignment session, right? So uh, that will be once in a week and uh, that is on Sunday. And your classes will be on weekdays. That will be from, you know, seven o'clock to to uh, approximately nine o'clock. So that will be your timing on weekdays, as I said, like, you know. And uh, so uh, by the end of this course, you will be having a project that, you know, that we will do all together. So that is also we are going to do. So a project, a real time based project that how the applications and, you know, if you have to go and deploy the application for a production of, uh, in the production environment so what all things you have to go and measure right so what all uh, process you have to go and follow so that we will be learning by the end of this course and uh, once this course finishes so after that you know we will be giving uh, you a project to complete and you have to go and write the whole project uh, that how you can go and deploy into the aws and then finally you can go and submit those projects to us Right, we will go and verify and we'll show you that okay, like what is the result and all. Okay, so that is how we are planning. And if you guys have any questions, so you can ask me now. I will be terminating all these instances and auto scaling group. And uh, can you tell us like what are the services that will be covered in your training session and? Uh... AWS and DevOps, or uh, what is the primary? Yeah, so the primary thing is like, you know, uh, the primary thing will be this, this AWS, right? So we will be covering uh, the most of the things related to AWS and some of the things related to our DevOps, like uh, how we go and run the CN, CD in AWS, you know. That is what we are going to cover. We are also planning for that. And we are also planning for this uh, Terraform, right? So how you can go and you know uh, use the Terraform in your production environment. So that is also like how you can go and you know, because in most of the uh, companies, people have already started to use Terraform or uh, some of the companies have started to use uh, cloud formation. But cloud formation, cloud, cloud formation has a limitation of, you know, that it can be only used in this AWS. It cannot be used in other cloud platforms. So, you know, getting a resource in the companies that will really become difficult when it comes to multiple cloud, uh, basically configuration or orchestration tool. Okay, so Terraform is one of the most popular choice for most of the companies when it comes to like uh, writing the configuration for their cloud orchestration okay so that is our, that is what we will be covering and of course like you know uh, the git because we are going to save all the code and everything on git all together so yes and the git will be the part of the course even when you will be learning this aws right like saving this script and all uh, will be will be on git okay so and, uh, we are also new to yes uh, we are also very new to linux so we don't have basic knowledge on your Linux as well. Yeah, so as soon as like we will be running any command and we will be writing any script. So, you know, uh, we'll, uh, we will guide you that, you know, how this uh, command is working, what is the meaning of this command and why we are doing it, right? As I explained you at this point of time, 
so when we will be having real sessions so that will be in a more depth and you can always ask the question that you know what do we mean by yam what do we mean by sudo and all right and uh, if you guys are completely unaware about the linux so we can have a session on linux also that this is how the linux works right so that we can go in and incorporate in our in our you know uh, course content Yep. Did you so, got the answer for your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this training will mostly cover uh, all the AWS services. Uh, and uh, what are what about the DevOps tools? Yeah, as I said, like you know, uh, DevOps tools like Terraform and Jenkins. Though, so these are like most popular tools these days, uh, which we are using. And also like one of the tool known as Docker, right? So that we will be covering. And the fourth thing is like Git. So four things from DevOps, Git and jenkins and docker and terraform right so these things we will be covering and you can also say that you know uh, we will be also taking a session of uh, lambda so lambda function is also like you know uh, count as a devops tools because uh, we do a lot of automations by using uh, lambda functions in aws environment so that also we can count it so are you guys aware about the python and like python is new to all of you uh, no i don't uh, have any knowledge on python even i'm expecting like python script and uh, shell scripting can i get it from this class okay so uh, you know uh, some of the basic things will be there that how you can go and manage some things you know by using this uh, lambda functions which essentially require the knowledge of, knowledge of python so that we can uh, you know uh, provide you during this session that you know uh, how this python works and what all things you have to go and write if you and if some new thoughts come into your mind so where you can go and search for the resources and uh, how you can go and start writing the script uh, using python right so so that you can manage the resources in it uh, by using the by using a service called you know aws lambda function so basically i don't believe that you know uh, python is is something which gives you everything so there are like, there are like a bunch of things we can go and do by using python scripting right i believe that you know if you have a good understanding about about a, some some specific task which you can go and which you can go and perform by using uh, you know uh, which you can go and perform by using like you know python and all so you will be able to touch other libraries also right so we will be learning a bit about this boto3 library boto3 library is is one of the library by using which you can go and manage the resources in aws right so when it comes to boto3 so basically it is by using python only right in order to in order to understand boto3 what kind of knowledge is required in python that we will be transferring you and uh, you know how we can go and use the boto3 library that we will be giving you that okay so that is one aspect of python basically right so that is what i believe that if you have understanding about you know one portion of the python so you will be able to do all other things uh, using python right did you got the answer for your question yeah i got it okay thank you okay any any other question which you guys have so far okay probably i haven't given the answer uh, you know for one question so that how many services we will be covering as a part of this aws so i have already shared you know uh, like a couple of screen share uh, screenshots with venkat so i think if you guys haven't received those screenshots so venkat will be providing those as screenshots to you that you know how many services we are covering and as i told you like all so now we have like five or six tools basically from DevOps, right? That we will be covering in this course session. Okay, any any other doubt which you guys have? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, good, so fine and uh, i think we haven't you know uh, we 
I didn't got the chance to talk with Shatish and 